What is going on guys, Lawrence here aka Monk7Mad and in today's video we're going to be covering three of the six NURB tools. Now these are wicked for creating fantastic models and renders within Cinema 4D. In part one we're covering the sweep, the loft and the extrude tool. Don't miss it. And in part two we're going on even better with Bezier, the lathe and the subdivision editor. Otherwise known as hypernerbs. So here's what you can expect to learn about in today's video. The extrude tool. One of the most basic features of Cinema 4D, take a 2D shape or a vector and create it into a 3D object. The loft nerves, take two or more objects and create some really interesting shapes. Combine, mix and match any combination for true, unique flexibility. The sweet nerve, take two layers, one as a path and one as a follower, create some pretty unique shapes, come up with a load of different combinations and truly create some interesting 3D items. So that's what you can expect to learn about in today's video. So all pretty exciting. So let's kick off with extrude. So what is extrude? Well, it follows on from the last lesson where we learned about creating that sort of additional 3D shape from something that's, you know, one particular panel. So we could grab the front and we could pull it out, make it longer. We could stem off from angles like here or there or basically anywhere from the shape we wanted. It's basically to force a shape out. Well, this is the same sort of principle, except we're not actually allowed to use any of what's known as a primitive shape, which is what we learned about in the first lesson. So you can't use those. So how does this actually work? Well, the way that these all work are through what's known as an object to, well, it's a, pair, it's a parent child object relationship. So you'll get what's known as the parent object or the effector. So in this case, it's the extrude object the NURB object, and you can use a spline or a vector, so you can take objects from Illustrator and bring it in. You can either draw manually within Cinema 4D, or you can just take some of the pre-made shapes. So if I was to take the star, for example. So now we've got the star. Now at the moment, this simple spline is just a vector. There's, there's no form to it. If I was to render right now, you can't see anything, because Cinema 4D does not recognize this as an object which it needs to render. So what you need to do is simply drag your spline within the extrude option and it creates it, it forces it into a 3D object which you can see immediately. Now if we render we can see we actually have that 3D object. So what's so great about this? Why, why couldn't I just use the other extrude? Well this is actually for shapes which you want to manually create so there's not every type of shape in the primitive types here. and. Um, if you want to bring something else in, this gives you a lot more flexibility. You can also do the same with text, and you can get really, really creative with it. So how does it work? Well, if we go to the object tab on the actual extrusion level itself, we can use the Z axis, otherwise known as the depth axis, and modify its property to give it that extrusion depth that you can modify as many times as you like. The great thing about this is also that since you have the spline separately, you can still modify this on the fly, which means you can create things and modify them throughout your project. So that's really quite cool. You can also create your own sort of things within Cinema 4D as well. So as I said a minute ago, you can draw them. But what you can do is actually combine shapes together. So if I was to go and get the cogwheel, for example, if I got a circle as well, if I shrink this down, so that the two form like a cog with a, with a hole in the middle. All I need to do is select both these layers, make them editable by pressing C on the keyboard or clicking the button up here, then right click on the objects while they're both selected and go to connect objects and delete. So now it's become one spline and we can just drag that straight within our extrude object. And it's now created this in 3D. So you can get really quite intricate with it. You can also go on things like the caps and change the cap. So the cap is the bevel effect in essence. And you can create that on both sides. That's why there's a start and an end. You can also change how strong it is, how many steps it takes to get there, so how smooth it is between. And you can really get flexible with this. The second one is the sweep nerves. So the sweep nerves, as I said in the small preview, was taking two things, a path and what's known as the follow. So the way it works is if I open up the object right now for the sweep, you'll see that I've got a rectangle and a spline. If I turn off the rectangle, you'll just see the 2D spline exactly like how we had a minute ago with our extrusion level. If we render it again, there's no form like so. So 
This works with two objects and no more than two objects and you can take whatever shape you want. I've used the rectangle to make it quite like a road. However, again, you can use all sorts. So if I grab the star, for example, made it a bit smaller. If I put the star in the object on top and then deleted that, the two objects you can see have now formed. So the star is following along this path. The one that's on the top is the actual follower. The one that's on the bottom is the path it's meant to follow. So if I swap this over, you can see it makes no sense. If I, however, wanted to delete this spline, so I've got the star. If I wanted the star to be the, the main path that's followed, and I want, uh, let's say, uh, a circle to follow around it, if I make that circle smaller and drag that on top of the star, you can now see it goes around the object, and it creates just this lovely followed sort of wire. It doesn't fill in the middle because it's actually strictly a path following tool. You can, of course, increase both of these. So if you change the star, you change how large the object is itself. If you change the circle, it changes how much it gets filled in. So again, a lot of flexibility here. Again, there also is a caps option, which will allow you to create that bevel effect again. The last one is the loft nerves. Now I'm beginningly becoming much more fond of this tool you can do so much with it and it's not really restricted by the amount of objects you put in it so I've only used three here the minimum you can actually use is two because as I said in the video it's a bridge gap well I call it a bridge to bridge gapper so the way this works is the actual loft nubs kind of covers from whichever shapes you've got to whichever other shapes you have in in this sort of structure so at the moment I've got two circles I've got a really small circle at the front Got a, a big circle in the middle and a star at the end. With the loft nerve switched on, you can see it starts here, moves to the middle where we've got the big sphere, and then gradually swaps over to the star. So if we rotate around, you'll see the star at the end. What's really great about this is you can get so, so creative. You can add any other object you want. So if I go in here and I get, uh, let's say, the flower, if I rotate this 90 degrees so that it actually is following the same sort of path as our current object if I put this in on top which is the very last one you can see the shape automatically updates to try and manipulate you can swap the order of this at any time so if I wanted the flower to be at the front I can just move this to the front for example and you can see the shape still is trying to compensate and work with it which is really really cool you can move any of the orders around and it will adjust accordingly. It works on the very bottom one is the starting point and the very top one is the ending point. So bear that in mind when you're actually making the structure. So for example, if I have this is the very end, we've got the star in the middle. Let's have the flower in the middle as well. And then we'll have the circle at the front. So let's move the circle to the front. We'll have the flower second here. Then we've got the star there and we've got the very small circle at the end. You can see how we've created something very, very odd without any real difficulty. You can create rockets, bullets, all sorts, and it's absolutely so easy to work with. You can change anything as we move, property, positions, rotation, scale, you name it. It's definitely a tool that's definitely worth looking into. Really interesting. Let me just quickly demonstrate what you can actually do with this tool. I'm going to speed up the video, just see how easy it is to make a rocket, for example. So, a very, very basic rocket shape, but you get the gist how quick and simple that was. Of course, it's not the greatest thing. It actually kind of looks like a paintbrush that's kind of upside down here. But you get the gist that you can really get flexible with this kind of tool. So that's something that is, uh, is going to fast become one of my favourite tools, I think. 
So that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to head over to part two of this video. The link will be in the description or on the screen somewhere. Don't miss out because the subdivision editor, otherwise known as the Hypernerbs, is something you seriously should look and learn how to use. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you around, and I'll see you later. Take care.